Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. China is a massive country, you don't need me to tell you that I'm sure. So it should come as no surprise that to manage this behemoth of a nation more easily, it is split down into smaller subdivisions, though pretty much every country is broken down into smaller areas, so that should not come as a huge surprise either. Some nations have counties, some have states, and some have counties within states. China's most well-known subdivisions however go by the name of provinces. Kinda. China's subdivisions actually have a selection of names. While the majority of them are called provinces, some are called autonomous regions, some are called municipalities, and two in particular are called special administrative regions. These different titles for these different subdivisions imply different things, such as the amount of self-control they have and what's actually within them. Though despite this, it seems socially acceptable to refer to them all as provinces, hence why I've called them all provinces in the title of this video. I just know if I didn't mention these different titles, someone in the comments would have. Provinces, municipality, whatever you want to call them. It's not these broad titles we're interested in today, but instead we're interested in the specific names that these subdivisions have. Each province of China has its own name of course. These names relate to a variety of things in these lands, from their geography to their history. So today we're looking into how these provinces slash autonomous regions slash municipalities of China got their name. We won't however be covering those two aforementioned special administrative regions this time around though. If you hadn't guest there Hong Kong and Macau. These two places actually have their own video already on the channel which you can go check for yourself. And as for Taiwan, its relationship with China and the names it uses, that could be a video unto itself too. Let's start with the Northwest Autonomous Region of Xinjiang. Yes, please bear with my pronunciation for those my guiding lights know this. This name means New Frontier as it was the most recent heir of land claimed by the Qing Dynasty when it was claimed by them, so it was quite literally the land's newest frontier. Then we have the province of Gansu. This name is actually a combination of names from the older regions that make up this province. Ganzhou and Suzhou. Then we arrive at the autonomous region of Inner Mongolia. This is actually a part of a child I've already made a video on, and this name unsurprisingly relates to its proximity to the now independent nation of Mongolia. This is the more Inner Mongolia, as it's more within the landmass of Asia as opposed to Outer Mongolia slash just Mongolia. Ningxiao is another autonomous region, with the latter part of its name coming from the ancient Jia dynasty. The former part of its name, however, comes from the nearby city of Aning. In China's northeast, we have the province of Heilong Zhangjiao, which has an incredible name meaning Black Dragon River. This relates to the dark black waters of the river of the same name that winds like the body of a Chinese dragon. And just below we have the province of Jilin, which comes from the city of Jilin Wula. This name means along the big river, as it's also next to a river. In China's southwest we have the autonomous region of Tibet, another part of the world with deep history which is a bit out of the realm of today's video. The name Tibet however does seem to be of somewhat unknown origins however. One theory is that it's either a Chinese or Arabic corruption of the indigenous name for the land. Bod. Where Bod came from however is a mystery. The province of Xinghai has a name that means Azure Sea, relating to the Xinghai Lake in the region, China's largest lake. It's worth talking about the provinces of Shangji and Shangji at the same time, as the names unsurprisingly have a shared history. Shangji with 1A means west of the mountains, as it is west of the Taihang Mountains, and Shangji with two A's means west of Shang, as it's directly to the west of the Shangji province. These names are actually indistinguishable in Pinyin, Pinyin being the method used to export Chinese names into the Latin alphabet. So for Shangji's name, another form of romanization was used instead, hence why these names are so similar. Moving on however, we have the Hebei province. This name simply means north of the river. This is because this province is north of the Yellow River, that all-important river which fostered infant China into the civilization it became. Then we arrive at Beijing Municipality. Beijing is once again a name we've covered before, and how it's not actually different to Peking. This is of course modern China's capital city, so the name simply means North Capital, as this city is more northern than some of the nation's previous capital cities. 
boarding Beijing municipality, however, we have a Tianjin municipality. Despite having a similar ending to Beijing, this one doesn't relate to the north or capitals. Instead, it means Heavenly Ford. A ford being a crossing in a river, of course. Though, what's so heavenly about this ford exactly, I'm not too sure. Back to provinces, however. This time we have Liaoning, with the first part of this name referring to the Liaon River. The latter part of this name means calm and tranquil. Perhaps this river isn't too rough. Then we have Shandong Province, which means East of the Mountains. This name once again refers to the Taihung Mountains. And as for the Henan Province, this means South of the River, that river once again being the all-important Yellow River. The province of Sichuan has a name with a bit of a deeper history, however. This name is some form of abbreviation of an older Chinese name, which means Four Circuits of Rivers and Gorges. This is because in the past, this province was split into four smaller states, which were called the Four Rivers circuits. Chongqing is another of China's municipalities. This name means double celebration, which is really fun, but what exactly is a double celebration of beats me. The province of Hubei, however, has a name simply meaning north of the lake, referring to the Dongting Lake. Anhui is another province which has a combination name, coming from putting the city names of Anxing and Guizhou together. This is also the case for the province of Jiangsu too, being a combination of Zhangjing and Suzhou. Then we arrive at China's last municipality, Shanghai. Shanghai is a city by the sea, so it should come as no surprise that its name simply means by the sea, though upon a slash above the sea may be a more fitting translation of the name. The province of Zhejiang is named after the Qiutang River. I know what you're thinking, those names sound nothing alike. Well, initially this river was called the Zhe River, and it's from this older name as to where the province got its name from. The province of Jiangxi has a name meaning west of the river. This refers to the Gun River, not the Yellow River for once. However, the borders of this province have changed over history, meaning this river now goes through the center of the province, not to its west. Hunan province simply means south of the lake, referring once again to the Dongting Lake. As for the province of Guizhou, we don't seem to be too sure as to where its name came from. The most popular idea is that it relates to a mountain called Gyu in the area. The Yunnan province has a name meaning south of the Yunling mountains. However, it's also known to mean south of the clouds, referring to the clouds that pierce through these mountains. Guangxi and Guangdong are an autonomous region and province respectively, though despite this bureaucratic difference, their names are very similar. Guangxi means western expanse and Guangdong means eastern expanse, as these expanses are in the west and east. Once upon a time, however, this was one large region called Liangguan, which meant the two expanses. The Fujian province is once again a combo name, coming from the region's two main settlements of Fuzhou and Jianzhou. Finally, we have China's island province of Hainan. Not only is it an island, but it's also China's southernmost province. So south, in fact, it's seen as being south of the sea, as that is exactly what this name means, south of the sea. And that is all of China's provinces covered, and of course, those municipalities slash autonomous regions too. What I found most interesting about this journey through the names of China is that despite how varied the land is, there's a lot of similarity in these names. From referring to their position in relation to a geographic feature, a piece of history has happened in the land, or by simply combining two settlement names together. China's names carry just as much history as the nation of China does itself. The provinces of China were suggested by Ekmo Sukarno, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of the provinces of China. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explain video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain.
thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.